So how have you been dealing with Agassi's passing? Like what 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 do you go through? Like mm -hmm. I'm sure days are different for you. Sorry, pick up some tissue. <laughs> Guys, come and get some tissue, please. I'm trying to not spoil my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just keep tissue on the side, okay? Because Tito said, he's not going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you said, though. <laughs> um, you said, okay. I sorry. said, don't make me cry. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my bad. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't do that. That should make you cry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. how have you been dealing? I know, obviously, it's been very difficult for you. Um, you're working. Yeah. Unless you try, keep on working to keep your mind off it. But, like, what happens when you go to sleep? Like, like what have you been experiencing this whole time? Um... All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the freshest podcast in the world. I'm happy to announce the El Tito podcast is now sponsored by Crep. <laughs> that's not the only thing that's new. I mean, you see the jacket, Alpha Industries. You see the pants, Alpha Industries. The drip is official. And talking about official, um, we got the one and only Nadia Nakai in the building. I just got word she just stepped in. Let's go! What we here for is yeah. the LTO podcast. Yeah. Joe, 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 Joe. Ha, ha, ha. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LTO podcast. Uh, today we got, let me start with rapper, reality star, businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I can carry on for days. She's the baddest female rapper we've had in this country. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> it's true. It's true? It's true. All right, she clearly got confidence. <laughs> so without further ado, make some noise for Nadia Nakai. Hi. Come on, everybody in the room, make some noise. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I got Nadia fucked up. Hey, she know? Yeah. How are you, I forgot Nadia? that we can oh, swear. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> are we starting again? Yeah. No, we good. Oh, we good. Hi, Tito. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm very good. I'm bad. I'm looking forward to this uh, interview because I'm very nervous. I know. Like, I know you well, so I'm gonna call out any cap. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I'm asking yeah. you questions, but I know the answers to these questions. So I know. If you cap to like the people, I'm gonna like. Ah, uh, Nadia. I know. I know. Um. I know. So, guys, our guests. It's on a journey of sobriety, you know. Oh my god, That's so why... make it seem like I have an alcohol problem. No, man. I, mean, just, just, I don't have a problem. I'm just not drinking right no, now. I'm gonna I... come back. No, you don't have to come back. I know. I'll I support come back. this decision. No, I'll come back. You you came here so early for the podcast. Look how focused you are. With no, but drinking. I'm just professional. I take money seriously. I you know, like I think that a professional business, all of that, I take it very serious. You know? No, that's true. That's no I'm care. always punctual. Yeah. Or early. So that if you always go over time, I say, sorry, babes, I was on time. Bye. Okay. So you, you know? don't do that to me? No, not uh, you. Uh, but God. you know, like the general uh, idea I'll of it. I you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, since, since you're not drinking Nadia today, yeah. um, I thought me and you could do um, a prime review. You okay. Know? Um, the name is buzzing it. in the streets. You heard about it. I saw like training on social media for it being like 600 grand or 400 grand or something for a bottle. I saw a lot of cap. And it's like vitamin water or something. It's like, <sighs> okay, let's, let's see if it's worth it. Actually. It's like the water your granny washes her oranges in and then drinks the water. <laughs> and it's got that residual orange taste. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's check okay, if this fine. is true. Okay, let's, I'm let's not taking a <laughs> Nadia, we talked about this. No, you, but know, was, you don't play me like that. I okay. said, I okay, said. You're that one I'll goes with your outfits. There's no green in my outfit. Nadia. No, yellow. Okay. There's like brother and sister. 
My outfit is fresh, by the way. It's dope. Your outfit is super, super fresh. You know. Wait! Oh, <laughs> I'm actually high-key thirsty. <laughs> okay, let's start this. Okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Sheesh. Oh, it smells nice. What flavor is mine? Mine smells like, uh, like you Skittles. You paid me. You took mine. Okay. In three, it smells two... Smells like Skittles. You okay. guys ready? Three, two, one. I actually like this. Of course you would be from Alex. You know what it is? Uh, you know what? <laughs> it tastes like cordial. You know that, that you mix with the water and you put, like oras. You know that type of, you mix it with something? Yo, of I, course you'll like it. Yo, You're not Alex, used to freshly Alex, squeezed Alex, Alex is going to be on you, I swear. <laughs> I actually you, like this. I actually do. You're not used to like fresh drinks. Like freshly squeezed. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. I love I like the smell it. of it though. I'm not okay. going to lie. It smells like Skittles. Okay, what do you give it? I'll give it like an eight. Not bad. Especially eight if it was cold. a good number. It's got a lot of, does this have like, um, what do you call those? Kilojoules. No. Um, electrolytes. Um, Is it I, like, ele it's like it, drinking an energy. Because I'm for drinks that give me like electrolytes, you know? Like coconuts have like high level of electrolytes, if you don't know. No, I don't know. And I, I hate, hate coconut. coconuts. <laughs> I'm sure you know this person for a long time. We're saying the same things at the same I time. I swear, I hate coconuts. Okay, talking about knowing you anyway. for a long time. I actually met you when? Um, 2011? Yeah. People don't know you've been rapping for a very long time. Mm. Um, I met you in a garage. In a garage? Yeah. Oh, because you're hitting on my friend. Nice. This garage here at McDonald's. No, I remember! Yeah. Was that the first time I met you? Didn't I meet you at, at Cypher Studio first? When we did Do Like, do like I Do? No, man. Do Like I Do was like 20... Like, much later. What are you talking about? Later. So I met you the first time as at McDonald's and you're pulling up on my girl. I was not pulling up. And I just happened to be in the passenger seat of my girl's car. That's where we met. And you were Tato. <laughs> 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 Let me, let's go meet my friend Tato. Tato. And then what happened? Yeah, you were nice. I, I just came, nice minded my business. I was not hitting on your friend, actually. I had you're a girlfriend right. at the time. I, I that doesn't you. change shit. So that was supposed to say, oh, you had a girlfriend. Oh, okay. You know, like, like my girl at that time can read the timelines. You are just like, you know, you're going to give her a bad refresh. Okay, fine. Moment. And you need to clear up a couple of things, too. I'd be hearing you telling a lot of people that... What's her name? Who? You're the girlfriend then. At that time? I yeah. can't say her name. Okay, yeah. fine. Never mind. Nadia, like, what are you trying to start? But anyway, let's... <laughs> you just get your head deny you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't date Tino. You know? I'm joking. <laughs> Get <your crazy>. Sorry, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay. So now the next question is like a two-part question. Mm. Okay. Um, you went on to leave Cypher's label. Mm. What was the name of the label, by the way? Sid Records. What? Sid Records. Sid Records. Yeah, oh, yeah International yeah, yeah. Sid Records. Oh, yeah. Type, yeah. Oh, yes. Then <coughs> you went on to join a uh, family tree. So mm. I want you to answer why you left uh, Sid Records and why did you think Family Tree was a good fit for you? So, um, the reason why I left Sid Records was... You can bring the food. You can bring that, yes, food. It's cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, brand placement. I don't know if you want to... Yo, give run us a bag, yo. You um, know, Simply Asia. Simply Where's the Asia. camera? Oh, there you go. Run bag, I find please. myself oh. looking at the lights. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. Um, can you see that? Sorry. <laughs> Does you want to grab this plastic for me? Thank you. It's a podcast, guys. You can take that away. It's not like a TV Sorry. show. You don't have to stop everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what were you asking? Um, Two-part question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Why did I leave, leave Sid? So I left Sid because I think we just um, just kind of like outgrew each other. And he started working. He started studying. And then he started working at Multi-Choice. And his, his like part started changing. So that's why we le I left. Mm -hmm. And then I joined Family Tree. Honestly... Because I've always seen Kaz when I was um, when I went to varsity at Monash. Because Boiti used to go to varsity at Monash, and he always would be on campus visiting Boiti. Mm -hmm. And then I used to record with Feel the Dream. They were called Feel the Dream back then, but it was Ashish and Himal Ganja Beats. Mm -hmm. And um, Bash used to manage me in varsity. Mm -hmm. So then once we went our separate ways, and I signed Sig Records. Bash, years later, Bash was now with family too. So I left Sid Records. I was like, yo, Bash, you know, there's that familiarity mm -hmm. of he used to manage me. This mm -hmm. is a thing. And then he kind of cultivated that whole thing. And then also, it even motivated even more because Keenan had dropped the baddest remix without me. 
So they were like, okay, <laughs> let's take the outcast and just run with her. And it just, yeah, it just worked, I guess. I was now the outcast. <laughs> You're so vindictive. You joined... <laughs> no, not because of that. I'm saying for them, I think. Oh, so he's For vindictive. family. Oh. I'm sure he was just like, ah, let's roll, honey. Actually, how did you feel when that song dropped? I mean, it had all the female rappers. For you no. guys that haven't seen uh, the Baddest Remix, uh, Baddest Remix by AKA features all the female rappers that's in the game. Uh, that Gigi the Main, it had uh, Rouge, it had Fifi Cooper, and Muslim. it had Moosley. Mm. And we were all asking ourselves, why is Nadia not on that song? How did you feel at that time, actually? So at that time, I felt really bad. Mm -hmm. But then I did my own version. Oh, yeah, so, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And Kenyon actually gave me props for that back then. He was like, oh, I didn't expect this, but this was really dope. Mm -hmm. Did I not get a season desist from his record label saying, please... <laughs> <laughs> please kindly stop performing the song because I would perform it. Because I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know? But I felt some type of way. I felt like... Um, and I've spoken to the girls, well, most of them. Mm -hmm. um, that I felt like the day that it came out, I was so surprised because it felt like they were being kind of like mean to me, which I didn't think was necessary because yes, I'm not on the song, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't have to feel like a gang up. Mm. You know, and I, and I spoke to like Gigi about it mm -hmm. then and I was just like, I really felt like you guys were ganging up on me and it wasn't necessary and, mm. you know. Um, but then years later, I asked Keenan, I'm like, why didn't you put me on the bed? It's like, ah, babe, sorry, I, I just didn't carve you. Yeah, I'm just like, wow, you don't need to do the honesty. <laughs> like, ah, babe, I just didn't carve you back then. I'm just like, I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> you got me now. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. And then, like, female rappers, we, we always get, like, a, a perception that female rappers don't get along, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe we're looking from the outside, but is it true? Do female rappers not get along at all? I think it's easy for female rappers to get into a tiff. Because mm -hmm. one, women are very territorial. So we naturally just want to be the main boss in, mm -hmm. in any type of situation. It might be the household, it might be the office, or whatever the case. We're just very territorial. Um, so a lot of misunderstandings can happen because of that, and we can run with it and not realize that it actually was a misunderstanding or was not actually will be. So like with me and Musi, we didn't get along for years. you know. And then when we finally got to speak, and I'm so grateful that we were finally doing able to squash our beef before Keenan passed because it was genuine. We were able to like really sit down and just like talk. Mm -hmm. And we realized that our misunderstanding was so, like we didn't even know what the problem was. We didn't even know what the issue was. It was just like, I had heard something, she had heard something and it kind of like just became this snowball effect mm -hmm. that actually was based on absolutely nothing. Which was also so annoying because we like missed on so many I feel like I missed on so many years of getting to know how amazing the music is as a person mm -hmm. as a musician as mm -hmm. just an all-rounded amazing person that I never got to know mm -hmm. for so many years so I'm grateful that it happened now because I feel like um people allowed it to happen so many people will come and say oh I hate that you and Muzi don't get along like you guys are both so cool and mm -hmm. and I think out of all the girls me and Muzi are probably the ones that are genuinely good friends with a lot of rappers in the game because we've known them for so many years. And I'm like, okay, so if you, if you so upset that we're not cool, then why don't you intervene and try fix it then? Because we can't speak. Mm -hmm. So someone could have come and said, ah, are you two guys, what's the problem here? Like, mm -hmm. that's, But I feel like a lot of people were also okay with the fact that we weren't cool. Because if we were cool, imagine what type of damage we would have done. <laughs> you know, it would have been crazy if that yeah. force was like together for a, much longer. But it is what it is. Okay. And then uh, you and Ru uh, Rouge, mm -hmm. uh, for a while, it's been uh, a competitive, I don't know if that was a competitive thing or you mm -hmm. guys actually had problems. Mm -mm. I never had a problem with Bruce. And I don't think she had a problem with me. Yeah. But I think a lot of things might have happened is from misunderstandings. Where people put at us to get against each other or whatever the case is, but I've never had an issue with Rouge. She's like, oh, Rouge, this thing is what? <laughs> mm. I've never had a problem with Rouge, per se. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not that I'm, I, I'm unaware, but mm -hmm. I don't think she had a problem with me either. It would be very surprising for me to learn that she had a problem with me. Okay. Fast forward, um, but this remix happens. Yeah. You join Family Tree, um, Casper in your vest, um, and you actually end up dropping your first album. Nadia Naked. First of all, why is this album Nadia Naked? Nadia Naked one because you know how I used to dress in high school before. It was all like bums and ahs and what. Mm -hmm. And people were like, Nadia Nakai, ah, Nadia Naked. And then I was like, okay, so this album 
I'm gonna call it Nadia naked because I feel like I've never given people my story. I've never told them about things that I deal with and the issues that I have. So I'm like stripping away all the barriers that I've created so for myself. So naked is a metaphor. Yes, a metaphor of me allowing you into my world and understanding me and taking away all these barriers that I've created for myself mm-hmm. for you to just get to know me in my business, but not as in like naked body. Literally. No, not yeah. literally, yeah. but in like my content and, and just getting to know me, you know? So yeah. So this album dropped in 2019, right? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> yeah. This album dropped in 2019. Mm. And you came in a game maybe around 2012. What is the reason it took you so long to drop an album? Mm. And why is that your only album? I dropped an EP, guys. I dropped yeah, but I'm talking about albums. albums. Ah, it's the same thing. All right. <laughs> um... I'm actually so happy that I didn't drop the album that I did at Sid Records because we did an album and we had intentions to drop it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like once I heard those songs, I knew I needed to grow so much more, even if with my delivery and my cadence and how I sound mm-hmm. and my topic matter. I'm so happy that album didn't come out because the type of person I was then to the type of person I was with Nadia Naked, it took me two years to do that album. Mm-hmm. I put so much work into that album um, and I grew while I was making that album that I'm still proud of it till today. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I would have been proud of the one that I started in 2012. Mm-hmm. I would have been cringy. Oh my God, no, that's not what I want people to hear. Mm-hmm. So I think as a sophomore album, or debut album, that Yannick was perfect for me. And the timing was also right. I just started. I don't think I had a right to drop an album because I always knew from the beginning of my career, I need to grow a fan base and this is going to take time. I wasn't about the hype, I was always about the longevity. Right. So I knew it was going to take time for an album to be ready for an album. Okay, that mm-hmm. makes sense. So okay. then, obviously, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <That's your thing. laughs> I'm so wrong. So, yeah. Uh, when you when you got to obviously Family Tree, you dropped the album. You guys were doing well. You dropped Now I Mean. Uh, you got a plaque for that. Mm-hmm. Um, then we are all surprised uh, when you announce on social media that you are leaving Family Tree. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the contributing factor to you leaving the label? Uh, I don't understand why people are shocked. Do they think I was supposed to be there forever? I mean, uh, not I, I, forever, I, I mean. I don't know. Maybe they just thought like you guys were like, you know, supposed to be a unified. I think people just in general don't like to see relationships mm-hmm. end, I guess. Yeah. So. But I think people always assume that when a relationship ends, it means that you ended on bad terms. We didn't end on bad terms. Um, I just feel like I wanted to grow and I wanted to build Braga Records and I wanted to build Braga Productions because I was doing the Naked um, the naked Room that was on Channel O that I started in lockdown. So I was kind of, my mindset was building my own entities, you mm-hmm. know? And I felt that, I mean, even like with Cass, he left WHB eventually. Um, so he understood the, the point where I need to grow as an individual because I don't think I'll ever be seen or I'd not seen or be able to achieve greatness if I constantly was Casper's shadow, you know? Mm-hmm. I needed to get out of that shadow because people would always attest all my successes to be like, yeah, it's because she's with FMG. Yeah, it's because she's with Ophelia. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things I achieved because of me. Like, I worked out hard for it. Mm-hmm. I did it. I put in the work. I, you know? And I felt like every success I got was always attested to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be able to have that for me, especially if I was putting the work for it. So, mm-hmm. um... People thought it was on bad terms, but it wasn't. It was it was chilled. We got weird later on, <laughs> but but for real, like it was okay. okay. It, it wasn't on bad terms. With you guys getting weird later on, could it be because after you left the label, you started dating? Well, he's arch nemesis. Well, you know, it wasn't like yeah. immediate. <laughs> yeah, but I know, I know, I know but yeah, but it I'm wasn't. Just, immediate. Yeah. It just happened that way. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it got a little bit awkward, and understandably so. Mm-hmm. I understood his feelings. That's why I didn't fight it. Mm-hmm. but I also wasn't going to defend it. I was going to defend my decision mm-hmm. in dating this person because I wasn't dating Rufi. It's not like he was my ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I was working with him. I was signed to his label. He was my label boss. And um, yeah, you know, mm. things happen. And it is what it is. And it I is. don't regret <laughs> it. I really don't, <laughs> you know? Um, you obviously dating Keenan. Mm. Did you have to like think about like, because obviously on social media it became like a big thing, like, oh, 
Yeah. Wow, she left the label and now things can just seem so quick. Yeah. Now she joined, <clears throat> uh, she's working in a video. You have to think about like, what is society going to say? What is yeah. social media going to say? And a lot of people are not aware what type of person Keenan is. Mm. They just see what they see on social media. Did you know. have to think about that to say, okay, am I going to date this guy? Um, do I have to consider this? Yeah, I did. There was a lot of factors that came into play. Mm-hmm. Um, I was worried that I'd lose fans because I, I, I thought that my fans were because of Rufile or Cass, you know? I didn't realize that my fans were my fans. They, mm-hmm. they stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And actually, I've grown more you know, mm-hmm. um, but I was concerned about that. I was like, yo, I'm going to lose my fans. They're going to mm-hmm. turn against me. Oh my gosh, what are people going to say? Then also um, with Keenan coming out of what he had gone through, mm-hmm. I also was concerned about that. And mm-hmm. is it too soon for him? Is it like, you know, does he need time? Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. So my mind was all over the place. I just didn't know what to do. But unfortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, I, both of us believe that for us to get together from where we were coming from, the most opposite sides of the spectrum, mm-hmm. the only thing that we thought it was, it had to be God. That's why it was just like, we really got to a point where we didn't care about anything else because everyone else's opinions cannot be stronger than what God is trying to do right now in our lives for the both of us, mm-hmm. with us coming together the way that we did. So um, it got to a point where I just trusted God and I was like, it can only be him because where would we have found each other mm-hmm. the way that we did, you know? So yeah. And like I was saying, um, I had Keenan on my first episode and we discussed certain things. And like the main thing I was saying was like, from face value, a lot of people think Keenan is a narcissist. Yeah. He's arrogant. He's an asshole. Um, but Keenan has a very soft side to him. Like when he loves, like he really loves. When he supports yeah. you, he really supports you. Like, you know what I yeah. love the most about that though? I love the most, what I love the most is that outside he looks hard and unapproachable and an asshole, Mm -hmm. but I only got the soft side of him. Like, Mm -hmm. I love that. I love Mm -hmm. the fact that if we had to go out right now, you know you can't approach this guy and you can't come and try to hug me for too long or Mm -hmm. I felt very protected. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, but when we're at home, I got the baby Keenan Forbes. I got Mm -hmm. the... Oh, baby, yeah, he's he, he's so you know, soft, he's yeah. so soft. Mm. And the baby, the one that would cry about something or see him with the boys and they're crying. And I'm just like, ah, ah, Don and Rich and all of you guys, I thought you guys were all these hard, hard niggas. That time, they're so soft and they tell each other they love each other. And mm. I'm just like, oh my gosh, actually, this people don't need to know the side of all of it. They don't need to know the way Don is so soft and the way Rich is so soft and Sia and how they have this brotherhood and they comfortable to say, I love you, bro, and cry mm-hmm. and, and be there for each other and know that, oh, Spooder's going through something and Keenan will drive to his house and, and play with his new dog. And they don't need to know that type of level of how that bro relationship was. And mm-hmm. they don't need to know the level of how soft and, and nurturing and baby he was to me. They don't need to know that. They must just know the persona of what AKA was on the social media and the music and the interviews and all of that. They must be, that's, the, that's all they needed to know. They didn't need to know any, anything more because I was reserved for people that were close to him, people that knew him. And I think that's what made it so special because then you get into it and you're like, you guys are nothing like what I thought you were. I thought they were all evil. Uh, <laughs> all all of them. To, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a moment where I try to tell you, like, Keenan is such a dope man. Yeah. Before you guys were cool. And, I was and like, you say, oh, please, he's, no. like, oh, he's an asshole. Yo, yes. and trust me. We actually thought about that for yeah. a while. Like, no, Kenya is like such a dope I didn't movie. believe yeah. it. I just said, there's mm. no way. I just thought all of them, because I was on the other side yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. I just saw them as like, oh, I, I have that side. It's mm. dark, man. Mm. It's very dark. Mm. But when I actually went to the other side, I was just like, yo, these guys are marshmallows. Eh? They're such good people. Mm-hmm. They are so soft and they are, and they're there for each other. Mm-hmm. They support each other, which is, was really nice to see. So you were obviously around for, the making of Mass Country. Mm. Um, can you, like, maybe there's certain things that happened during Mass Country that maybe we all don't know about. Um, well, I got um, the songs early, but you could maybe, is there stories that you can tell us about I Mass mean, Country? There, there is a lot of stories. I mean, there's a lot of songs. Like, there's one song that I actually have on my phone that he sent me, and I sent it to Zadok. And I said, Zadok, do you still have this song? And Zadok had never heard it. He's like, what? Yeah. And I was like, you can not send me this song. And I'm like, it's so crazy. Like, how come you guys didn't use this on the album? And he's like, yo, I haven't even heard this song. What? This is crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, just like 
there's a whole bunch of stuff, but I mean, like, um, with company. Like, yeah, let's talk like about what, that. Yeah, we can talk about that conversation yeah. we had. Yeah, so, like, with company, Spononna was supposed to be the single. And the reason why I love Spononna is because that song was about me. Oh, where? Okay. So that I was loved my favorite it. song, too. Yeah. yeah. So I loved that. And then, like, literally, the last session he had, he didn't even go away. The last session was at his house. Uh-huh. And, um, like, they're literally writing the songs on the board saying, this is number one. They're track listing. Uh-huh. Does Tiamo not walk in uh-huh. with this song called Company uh-huh. and plays it? He's also drunk as a skunk. So we're not taking him seriously. Wow. Company came out of that. And I was just like, I, I, I love the song, but I just hated the fact that it said one girl, not enough for me. Two girls, not enough for me. All the way to six. <laughs> and I'm like, six girls. And he's like, no, babe, but it's not me that's saying it. It's keto. I'm just like, oh. So if he said three, you would have been cool. Dude. No, <laughs> but he didn't say it, so it's fine. As long as he didn't say the words. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like, ah. So the thing about that song is that um, literally about probably two nights, you know, you have a deadline where you have to submit the album. Yeah. And Two nights, Kido now and him, they're talking on the phone and he's like changing the structure. So Kido is trying to change the structure to make it sound more like the structure of Afro pop music, mm-hmm. which is diff- it's not exactly the way that it is now. Mm-hmm. And Keenan and him are going back and forth. And I was so impressed with Keenan because the- Keenan, I normally know, but I'm like, I, I screw you also, Keenan. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. but he- Kido is saying, yo, dog, like, I've had this song for long. Like, this structure is going to work. And he said, okay, cool. We structure it. Just as long as you keep it in the minutes that it's supposed to be in because I submitted the, the, the whatever. Mm-hmm. So you can change it, but if it's one minute off, it's a mess. He's not trusting him. He just sends the song. Do you understand how Kenny was depressed at three o'clock in the morning? I said, babe, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. He's like, he's right. His vision is better. <laughs> he was so upset that he didn't think of that version, yeah. you know? So now I don't know if that version is the one that got released or if it's not the one that got released. I'm not sure if he switched them, but I know it was too late for him to actually make some oh, yeah, type of yeah, changes. Yeah, so he did send me the song. Also, it was, it was a bit different. Yeah. It was a bit different yeah. on the structure way. Yeah, that the, the way of Kido kind of made it sound more yeah. Afro beats, like mm-hmm. how like Wiz Kids and them do it. Mm-hmm. And um, it was it was it wasn't a big change, but that subtle change made a difference. And he sat on the bed and he was just like, "I'm like, babe, what's wrong?" He was like, "He is right." His one is better. Because he's fighting him. He's like, dog, like, I know. You know how Keenan is. Like, I know. Like, I trust me, dog. Mm. This is the way that it needs to be. Like, trust me. Mm. He was like, dog, like, P. Diddy was asking for the, like, Snoop Dogg was asking for this song. All these guys were asking for this song, and I gave it to you. And the Keenan I know would be like, then fuck you and your song. Take your fucking song. <laughs> but he didn't even do that. He was just like, he, he calmed himself. He was calm. He was receptive. He's like, okay, dog, you know what? Do what you need to do. And let's do that. And also the other thing about the album, sorry, it's crazy. Actually, the, anyway, but the other thing about the album is what I love is that Keenan was able to work with absolutely like almost everyone on the album, except um, the guy from Mozambique. Mm-hmm. From um, on, I'm a piano, I think, because he's in Mozambique. But even when we went to the states, he was able to get into a session with Kido because he stays in Beverly mm-hmm. Hills and work on the song and, and do it together. Mm-hmm. So I'm really happy about how he was able to work with absolutely everyone and like touch everyone and mm-hmm. and yeah. So. It's a special project. Sorry, I can no, talk about it yeah, forever. Yeah, it, is, it is. I mean, yeah. uh, when Kenyan made company, he called me, sent me the song, and he's like, the first thing he said to me is like, champ, it's lit. Yeah. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, I am the greatest of all fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. Like, I am the greatest of yeah. all time. And it's sad to me that he obviously never got to shoot a video for that song. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that he was that excited about mm. that song. And... To see this song do so amazing, amazing. is like, wow. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, like, it's really wow. great. So, I, I mean, can talk about the album. There's so many stories, but we can talk about it offline. Right. <laughs> There's so many stories. So, mm-hmm. obviously, before the album dropped, um, two weeks before the album dropped, um, we all got the most shocking news. Mm-hmm. I think it was Friday the 10th, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. A Friday night. Um, we all get news. Keenan has passed away. You're getting calls. I'm shocked. Like, nah, this can't be true. Mm. Like, 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 like. Where were you when you got the news? Mm. Um, what was happening? Like, so, um, I was at Ayanda's event. She had asked me to perform at her, at her, I don't know if it was her birthday, but she had an event at the Old Sands. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I spoke to him 10 minutes before he passed away because he FaceTimed me. And so Don's girlfriend, Azola, was sitting next to me. And he calls me in the greatest of spirits, baby, what are you wearing? Missy, what are you wearing? And then he's like, okay, um, the, the boys and I are about to leave. We're going to the hotel to get ready and then we're going to go to the club. So I said, okay, cool, babe. Um, and literally like 10 minutes later, Azola comes to me because she's at the same place. She comes to me and she says, babe, can I talk to you for a second? So I, don't, like, I was just like, what? the problem that was the last thing I would have thought you know and she came and just pulled me to the side and she says babes um, Keenan got shot and I'm like it didn't register that like shot fatally at all until I got the news that it was fatal I really felt like it's probably shot in the shoulder or like in the leg or but also like what what do you mean shot like it doesn't make sense it didn't register I literally ran out of that venue um Azola came with me, thank God. Otherwise, I would have been alone. So I'm so grateful for Azola. But um, she came and she chilled at the house with me. And then got confirmation. And then everybody started coming to the house. And I, we got in the car and we drove to Durban immediately that evening. Which was also pointless too, because there was nothing I could do. But I was just like, I have to get there. Like, I just have to get there. Um, and then when we got there, I literally was there for like a few hours. I saw the boys. Um, they were all distraught. And then I went to the airport and flew back to Joburg. And then Tony and Steph arrived. And they were like, oh, yeah. It was a lot. Mm. It's still crazy thinking, but it just feels like yeah. it just had, like, happened yesterday. Mm. Um, even, like, the whole time. Even now, I just find it, like, like it's not true. It didn't happen. It, just, it does not feel real at all. It's crazy. It's, like, the last thing I would have ever thought of is... Keenan died. Mm. Like, that was the last thing I would have... Last, last thing, you know? Mm. And it's so crazy because, like, two weeks before that, he was like, babe, you know, I'm done with, like, doing club gigs. Like, I just want to J-something it out. I want them to call me when we're doing festivals or there's a Samsung launch or whatever. Like, I don't want to do these clubs anymore because mm. he also got tired of, like, drinking alcohol. He got tired of, like, having to do that whole schlep every weekend and... You know, so he was, he even stopped smoking. Like, that's crazy because yeah. Keenan's a smoker. Mm -hmm. He started vaping and it was all about weed. And, mm. you know, like he was trying to find things that was keep him away from, from drinking alcohol, which mm. was like a good path for him. And then also two weeks before that, he, he never wanted me to be part, part of Cabello himself because that was his journey of what he was going through. Mm. But two weeks before that, he took me to the first one where I went to the home cell. That's why I haven't been able to go back there mm -hmm. because, like, it's like he took me there and left me there, <laughs> you know, That's which crazy. is crazy. So let's speak on that. Um, mm -hmm. Two weeks before that time, exactly, he called me and he was like, uh, his birthday is on the 28th of January. Mm -hmm. So he passed away 12 days later, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, he hit me up like, yo, it's my birthday. You have to come. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to come. Like, you know, I'm... At, Actually, it happened right here at this yeah. club. That's the last time Ma I saw Montana, it. Montana downstairs. Yeah, Montana downstairs. Yeah. Um, it was like, yo, you have to come. You have to. He was like so adamant, and that is like the last time I saw him. Yeah. And for me, there's so many things like about Kenyan's death where I just don't the way how things happened, mm -hmm. and we we had a conversation about this. It's like some way somehow he knew, mm -hmm. like in his head, like he doesn't have much time yeah. on this earth, but. He could not confirm it, but some way, somehow, on the inside. I mean, we also spoke about, like, um, you, you, you touched on Cavalo's home cell. Mm. Um, Keenan, a lot, what might, a lot of people might not know, uh, Keenan started becoming spiritual, more mm. spiritual. I mean, he was attending um, the home cell with Cavalo, mm. um, which I'm attending now because of him. Mm. You know, uh, shout out to Don Design. Me and him are the ministers there. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love that. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. You know, like, like, you, you sorry know? to interrupt you. I yeah. just, you just remind me of the story of there was one day that we... Because, you know, weekends are always so difficult for us. Don had been going to church and he's like, yo, come on Thursday or come on. Mm -hmm. We're like, yeah, we'll come. But, like, weekends are always so tough. And I remember there was one day he's like, babe, we're going to church tomorrow. And he slept in my house. And he's like, we're going to wake up. We're going to go to church. We wake up. It's not the seven or two days. All roads are blocked. We're trying to go all around to get to the church. We can't get there. He says, babe, we're going to stop at Monte Casino. We stop at Monte Casino. We sit at the benches. He opens the Bible app, and we literally had a sermon there, just the two of us. That's crazy. Because he was just like, okay, you know what? We can't get to church. 
but we up and we're going to pray and we're going to read the scripture. So that's why I'm just like, it's so difficult for me to explain the type of person that Keenan was when I was with him, because I don't know him prior, but the Keenan that I knew was just an amazing person. And, you know, I'm so happy that he, he found that, oh, I, I, I don't know, I'm sure he was, he believed in God for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he was spiritual all his life. Mm-hmm. But like, I feel yeah. like, yeah. I, definitely, but I feel like closer to the end, he was so close to God that there's, I'm, I have no doubt where he is. I Most know definitely. he's right next to God. I agree. 100%. He's right there, you mm-hmm. know? So, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. So how have you been dealing with, obviously, his passing? Like, what, what, what do you go through? Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure days are different for you. Sorry, please have some tissue. <laughs> Guys, can we get some tissue, please? I'm trying to not spoil my makeup. <laughs> Thank you. Just keep tissue on the side, okay? Because Tito said, he's not going to make me cry. <laughs> you said, though. <laughs> um, you said, okay. I sorry. said, don't make me cry. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't do that. That should make you cry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. how have you been dealing? I know, obviously, it's been very difficult for you. Um, you're working. Yeah. Unless you try, keep on working to keep your mind off it. But like, what happens when you go to sleep? Like, like, what have you been experiencing this whole time? Um. So when Keenan passed, the first month was very tough, especially for his family, because they had to initially pack up all his stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And after that, when I went back home, Lynn and my friends literally stayed with me for a month. Like, it was, it was a lot. Because I think, I feel like they had me on, like, suicide watch, <laughs> to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um... But, like, when I started working again, the support was, yo, like, I can't even explain how crazy it was. Like, Mm -hmm. I also sometimes felt so undeserving of the amount of support and the amount of people rallying behind me. Yeah, you did deserve that. But they were also, they also lost them. You know, like, they also were going through the most. But I think how it was when I had to go back to work, it was out of this world. I don't know how to explain it. It's crazy. <laughs> the first day, I was a complete mess. Yo, I think I was running on rockets with no shoes on at one point. <laughs> with no shoes on. But everyone just rallied behind me to support me. So it made it a lot easier. And then, um, obviously, every, everyone can't go to all my gigs. So eventually, it kind of like phased out. And then I was with just my team. And they were also very like, kitty gloves with me like very mm-hmm. careful and very like you know and I had to bump up my security also because I just was very scared because I just couldn't believe like something like this could happen in South Africa like this mm-hmm. you know this is so close to home so you have to like bump up your own security and mm-hmm. even the security at home because I was too scared to sleep in my room so I sleep on the couch mm-hmm. and um it's just adjusting to being with somebody so much of your time to being completely alone and dealing with the loneliness of being alone, mm. you know? And I'm still adjusting with that. Um, but I knew the one thing I couldn't do was turn my back on God because God was all I had, mm-hmm. is all I have. Yeah. And um, I'm just waiting for his plan for me because at the beginning I was very angry. So I'm like, you forgot mm. about me. Like when Keenan yeah. went through what he went through, you put me in his life to help him. Mm. But you haven't put anyone in my life to help me, mm. the loss of losing him. Mm-hmm. You know, like, why have you forgotten about me? Like, why do I have to do this alone? Mm. Why do I have to be this lonely and this sad and this heartbroken and have to p- pick myself up? And then I realized that God didn't. He, 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 he gave Keenan me, but he gave me a community of people. Yeah. Like, so many people. Yeah. And, Something about that. I have to give a yeah. big shout out to... The Forbes family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm. Uncle Tony, um, Aunt Steph. Lynn. We have to give Fred. him Steph. We yeah. have to give him a big shout out because um, us as black people, you know, because you're not married to Kim, mm. you know, um, certain things wouldn't happen 
right? yeah. our culture. Yeah. You know, and I've seen them being very supportive, treating you like you guys were actually married, the way mm. they've been treating you and the way they've been supporting you. Like that is like so beautiful to see. So I just felt like, you know what I'm Thank saying? You. Like we have to give them like the utmost respect, you yeah. know. And I love your relationship with Cairo. Mm. That's like you being a mother. Mm. Um, and then you've told me you want to be a mother actually yeah. before. So like tell me about that relationship. Kara is, like, the sweetest girl. I don't know how to explain it, but mm. she's so considerate. Like, even, like, at the beginning, if she thinks I'm crying, she, she, she like, look at me. She's like, is she crying? Mm. And then she's like, okay, she's not. Like, that's how much she wants to make sure you're okay. Mm. You know, like, mm. she's so crazy again because mm. it's, like, all these people, like, she's lost her dad, mm. you know, but it's, like, she's still considerate about, like, how I feel, you know, and she wants to come see me and then she's around. Um... I'm happy that we were able to build a relationship and keep most of the life. Because mm-hmm. um, she was around a lot, you know, and I'm happy that I was able to spend time with her and it wasn't awkward because I said from the beginning that if Zintle is not okay with me mm-hmm. meeting Cairo, I, I don't want that to happen because I know how it can make someone feel weird if they're uncomfortable with me because she didn't know me. Like, she didn't mm-hmm. know my, my vibe and mm-hmm. you know, but Z made it... when How Z made it clear to me that she's okay with me meeting Cairo was we were at this um, Fashion Week launch. And I think it's the first time I actually had seen... No, no, it's not. It's the second time that I'd seen Z since I started dating Keenan. She was just like, when are you going to start babysitting? You need to babysit Cairo. <laughs> and then I, in the, and inside, I'm just like, okay, she seems like she's fine with this. So I told Keenan, and I think I met Cairo like literally two days after that, mm-hmm. you know? And um, like, it's just, it's so special. I'm just, I'm just so grateful that I can still have a relationship with Cairo. I'm mm-hmm. so grateful that she wasn't completely removed out of my life. And mm-hmm. um, I know maybe in the future, she's probably going to start calling me auntie. <laughs> because, like, what is she calling you now? She calls me Nadia. I'm not saying like Nadia because mm-hmm. people say co-mom or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, she has a mom and a very powerful mom, a mm-hmm. very strong mom, a very loving mom. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult for me to be like co-mom without Keenan. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably graduate to like an auntie Nadia. <laughs> to be like an aunt, mm-hmm. you know, like whatever. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful. For that. Can we also give a shout out to Zintre? Shout out to Zintre, definitely. <laughs> like a lot of relationships, like baby mamas don't want to see mm. like, like, like they ex, you know mm. what I'm saying? And they baby going there and being in a relationship is very mm. difficult, you know? And a lot of people on social media might say this and that, but yeah. for me, it's beautiful to see that relationship, you yeah. know? And you guys being confident, like, Zinta, to be like, yo, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a confident woman. Yeah. I'm okay with my kid going to go spend time with that. So yeah. that's, that's been amazing to see. Yeah, it's been really great. I'm so grateful for that because, like you said, like, I think a lot of people that have had comments on the way that our relationship is and the way it is, it's because they're so used to the toxicity going on in their own lives and their own relationships and also using your kids as weapons mm-hmm. to get back at your baby daddy so you make it difficult for your baby daddy and his new girlfriend to get involved with your child. And you just see the maturity um, in the way that we're dealing with it with Lynn, Carol, Zinclair, Bongani, the whole dynamic. Mm-hmm. It's just a whole bunch of mature people, a whole bunch of people that love the kids that are involved mm-hmm. and understand the importance of not damaging the kids mm-hmm. and not, um, you know, it's just everything was lovely. And I think also with Zintle and, and Keenan, they co-parented very well when he was still around as they well did. for the longest mm-hmm. time, they you know. Mm-hmm. They co-parented very well. So that kind of made it very easy to trickle down. And then on top of that, Keenan grew up with his mom and his dad also Super. co-parenting, mm-hmm. co-parenting very well when it came to them. So, you know, it makes sense why they would co-parent well because they they saw how... Tony and, and Lynn were co-parenting. It took some of that juice. <laughs> I don't know. That was beautiful. Yeah. Like, when you, like, say, maybe, like, Kyra sometimes looks at you, do you think she fully understands what has happened? I used to question that, too. Mm-hmm. I used to be like, does she fully understand? I think she does, though, because, like, when she's in my house, I just came back from Dubai, so I got mm-hmm. them gifts. I got them a whole bunch of, like, little trinkets. And I bought a lamp for myself in, in the color purple, which is his favorite color. So I took it out and I was like, oh, maybe if I rub it, the, the genie will come out. And then she said, maybe daddy will come out. You know, so she understands mm-hmm. that there's a spirit level. Mm-hmm. And even when we went to the movies the other day, she saw a cemetery and she looked up and then she's like, oh, I thought that's what daddy is there. You know, so mm-hmm. she understands that when we all went to take the awards to his grave site, you were there, you saw how she cried. Mm-hmm. She had to take a moment by mm-hmm. herself and she cried. And also hearing when she came back from Nelspreet, 
and she cried when she heard daddy issues and she heard her voice. And so she does understand. Um, I It was difficult. There's a lot of like conversation, not a lot, but there's like one conversation that I had with her that was so difficult to have because it was just me and her. But she asked me like what happened, mm-hmm. even though that she had been told already mm-hmm. um, with her mom and, and, and Glammy, they sat down and spoke to her and told her mm-hmm. what happened. But she asked me again, like later. And it was so difficult because I didn't know what to say. I was like, oh my gosh, like, like you know, I just said that people hurt daddy. And this is what happened, you know? And um, so she asked questions, you know? But I think when you're young, your mind just, just, I wish I could deal with that the way kids do. You mm-hmm. know, I feel like it's going to be a lot harder when she gets older. Most definitely. Yeah, when she gets older and she starts really seeing the gap of her dad not being there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'll be a lot harder. But right now, as a kid, I think it's a lot easier to be able to kind of... I don't know what it is. I don't know how to explain it. Talking yeah. about that day, it was beautiful. Um, <clears throat> when Keenan won um, four awards for... Yeah. For, nice, con- nice Country. Yeah. The Metro Fam Awards. Yeah. Um, we had an intimate celebration the day after. Mm. We went to the gravesite. Mm. Um, just a few of us. I mean, like, yeah. maybe 15, 10 yeah. of us. Yeah. And... Cairo was singing. Let me tell you guys. Yeah, she performed. <laughs> we got a performance uh, from Cairo at the gravesite. Mm. She performed. She could sing company throughout. She word for word. Word for word company. She yeah. performed. Um, like, I mean, lemons to lemonade. Lemons to lemonade. We were, she was a jukebox. We said, okay, now do crowd. Now. <laughs> and she performs word for word. And it's, it shocks me so much. Like, I, you know, I know she obviously knows word for That's her dad. But mm-hmm. I'm just like, Word for word. That is crazy. Word yeah. for word. Yeah. And then we went to your house. Um, yeah. To celebrate Keenan and like I think most of all, man, um, with us being there as like this family of friends, you can see mm-hmm. like the impact that Keenan left. How many people loved him? Yeah. You know, and yeah. we had such a beautiful celebration. Mm. Um, we argued and fought. <laughs> yeah, we did. But we were like, we roasting each other. <laughs> it's not a real fight. Oh, yeah, in the, in the lounge. It is. I don't even know what we were fighting about. I'll tell you what we were fighting about. Some fighting dope. About? Some dope. Yeah? Uh, some dope was there. Yeah. And then um, he said, some dope said, um, back in the north, right? Yeah. Um, there was like him, like him and Tony. Yeah. Tony, see you getting a shout out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, and then, they, yeah. they, they were like so influential in the north. Yeah. And then, um, they, like when they would come into the clubs and buy bottles, and everybody knew them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, then and said, my counter thing was like, no, was like, nah. They, we knew the we stars. Said, yeah, we nah. saw you. We knew Keenan, yes. Yes, and Tito, they yes. were the cool niggas in the club. Yeah. And it, it was like that. We didn't know Tony and some dope. Sorry, some dope. We didn't know you then. Ah. Uh-uh. When they were in the club, we knew the stars. The Les, Keenan, Tito, Aboquesta, Caspar. Those were the people who knew the stars. But that's what I was saying. Also, now the, the shift in dynamic and how it is now yeah. is that in the clubs, the ballers are actually getting known more yeah. than a lot of the artists because. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that now, like, you know, are building, like, kind of brands around them. And, you know, there's, like, a whole bunch of, I don't even know ballers' names like that, but just, like, you know, they have, like, names, you know? Why, <laughs> do, you think, why do you think that's the case? Like, Because girls are now messing with ballers, no matter what age they group, what it, how. Before, you had to be cool. Like, mm-hmm. that cool swag was your currency. Mm-hmm. Like, your, your, just your swag and your ambiance and the, and the energy you brought mm-hmm. was your currency. But now, the girls don't care about that currency. They actually want currency, mm-hmm. like real currency, mm-hmm. you know? So that's why the ballers are now able to come through and actually make you have a small section as an artist and they actually have the best section in the club mm-hmm. because it's, it's, they can really control the energy and the vibe because the girls are around. Uh, country, maybe do you think that's been happening for a while, but you are not the type of girl that looked for that. No, I, I, I'm not that type of girl that looks for that now either, but I'm aware. Like, I've always been aware. And I, even looking back, like, I knew ballers back then as well. Like, mm-hmm. people that were well off, that were in the clubs. Mm-hmm. But I'm just talking about energy. Yes, you were there to buy the bottles and whatever. I've, I've met a lot of them. Mm-hmm. But the energy when you were in the club then, as opposed to the energy when it is now, it's literally like the ballers are like running the energy right now and you won't even know who the person is, but you just see Dom and, and what and who's and what. And that's more of the energy now. And we spoke, saying. we also spoke, um, I know we're going everywhere now. We also spoke about the state of 
South African hip hop. Mm. The think, state of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you were talking about like the impact that South African hip hop had at that time. Yeah. To where it is right now. Yeah. It's crazy mm -hmm. because I feel like South African hip hop then was more than just hip hop; it was a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like we really came through with that energy, and it was talking about not just the the music, but like when it was like the camps, like the boys in bus, and it was the family tree, and then it was the F F two D. Even though he stole Gemini from us, and I don't know where he stole Younger <laughs> from, but <laughs> you know there was there was clicks, you mm -hmm. know, and um and cash time. I can't even forget cash time. So. Those movements also made it so cool. It was like the Rat Pack. Like, mm -hmm. we really, like, pulled up. I mean, even Cash had their own gears. Like, I think they had their own bomber jackets that even had, like, their own the T-shirts. Yeah. The T-shirts. Yeah. You know, so it was just, like, the energy was so cool. But now, obviously, the genre that's kind of, that's taken the forefront is I'm a piano, but don't ever get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. <laughs> Talk to him, Don't ever get it twisted. They uh -huh. are living that hip-hop lifestyle. And Facts. the culture is hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And um, people can say, oh, you know, hip-hop is from America, blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, babes, if you're going to keep saying that nonsense, then that means you live in a hut with no TV and no radio and you're not exposed to any, any, any type of media from outside the world. Unfortunately, for you, South Africa is a world country. It's a, Africa is a worldly continent. It's part of the world. Mm -hmm. So we'll be influenced by it. But piano doesn't have a clear-cut culture. They have the music. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the culture with the snapbacks or like the, the Timberlands that are breaking people's legs <laughs> or <laughs> the baggy yeah, pants. Don't, 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 don't <laughs> I didn't understand that this story. Was a secret, it doesn't dude. make sense. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, anyway, but I'm just yeah, talking about yeah. the culture, like how we would pull up. And, and then you'll have local brands that would take that American culture and localize it. Like, like um, that, is it Batu? Um, or I'm a kid kid. Yeah. Or like how they'll take the bomber jackets and localize it and use I'm a kid kid fabric or like prints or whatever. But that was part of the culture. And piano guys, they are hip hop culture doing piano. There Those is, guys are hip hop guys. When you, if you switch off the volume while you're watching it TV, like there is music. no difference There's between no difference. hip hop and piano. There's no difference. If you just yeah. switch off the song yeah. and you put the Tito song, yeah. Ah, uh, it's the same, babes. Yeah. It's really the same. And I mean, that just shows how undeniable hip hop is. And that's why I feel like people say, oh, is hip hop gonna come back? Hip hop is dead, blah, blah, blah. Hip hop is the one genre that will always be there because it's actually more than the music, it's a lifestyle. Facts. It's really a lifestyle. And there's a message to hip hop. Um, a lot of music is dance music, like piano is dance music. Yeah. Hip hop is actually, we tell stories, there's yeah. content, there's, there's certain content. subject matters we speak on. Yeah. So all you guys that's doing hip hop, well, actually, what's about to happen now? <laughs> let, me, let me keep quiet, but there's a, lot, a lot of music is about to drop from hip hop. Like yeah. watch hip hop do its magic right now. Hip hop is, listen, I've, I haven't dropped a piano song and I've been rocking and there's mm -hmm. a lot of artists that have been doing hip-hop and constantly were doing mm -hmm. hip-hop and have been rocking. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Keenan also his album, like, come on. It's, 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 you can't say genre is dead. Mm -hmm. You really can't say that. Um, and it's forever evolving. And I don't think one has to die for the other to flourish. Mm -hmm. Because people say, oh, hip-hop is coming back, meaning piano is going to die. No. Uh, we can coexist, yeah. Yeah, and also because piano, we should be so proud of it because it's so South uh, Facts. And it's so... Us, and it's so exportable and it's doing waves that you don't want that genre to die. Nigga, it nigga, not die. Is, nigga has had me on a chokehold like Dog. So, so bad. Dog. Like, like and, and just the <laughs> that's the hottest that, song of the year, by the way. Yeah. I just had to say that. Yeah. No, for real. And mm -hmm. also the fact that the artists now, we've been suffering under Afro, uh, Afro pop, Afro beats shadow mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. All those Nigerian artists have been traveling out of the country and we've been just looking at them and then they come here and they have their own radio show. Like Sabi had a whole show dedicated to Afro pop. Facts. Which we didn't have that in Nigeria, yeah. you know, but now I can bet you there's a piano radio show in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing we don't want to happen is for piano to die. No. Nah. But mm -hmm. our palettes are definitely going to expand and hip hop is always going to be there because again, like I say, it's more than the music, it's the culture. A lot, another thing about piano artists is that you know the song, you don't know the artist. There's a other, like, you don't know the artist. Yeah, well, there's Not certain, all of them, yeah, certain yeah, people. Yeah. Like, I know, like, like, Papi, Papi Cooper, Polka, like, um, Filoti, um, Young Stana, Kamumpela. Like, there's the big ones. But there's a lot of, like, hit songs. Like, the, like, Pepper. I don't know those guys. What do they look like? Okay, let's not go there. No, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I'm telling you, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I hear you. Because yeah, it's, yeah. It's, some of the piano artists are only worried 
about the song, mm -hmm. but not the brand. Mm -hmm. And you know what hip hop does well is that we'll give you the song and the controversy. Uh, I'm dating this person, or when Casper Kiss and Amanda Dupont on, on television, that's so hip hop of him. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about more than the music, you're talking about the artists and the shenanigans they're getting involved in, and who's subbing who, and who's dissing who, and who's this, and who's composing, and who's back to back, and who's. Uh, I'm so glad I'm you said that's so hip hop. Yeah. I have a message for Pearl Tusi. <laughs> Pearl Tusi. Give, M give MT a try. Uh -huh. Do it for the culture, you no, know? I, mean? I saw your comments. <laughs> I saw your comments. Are you proud dogs? Do not give it to these niggas. Ah, uh, no. These niggas. No, no, yo, no. Pearl yo, needs to, no, you know Pearl no. needs to date. Pearl needs to date Michael B. Jordan. That's, that's the level Pearl needs to be dealing with. I'm not worried about Michael B. Jordan. Oh, you will. If Michael B. Jordan walks in here right now, you're not going to be worried about Michael B. Jordan. No, and then Pearl is on no, Michael B. Jordan's I'm advocating for MT. I'm, ah, so I'm, empty, no yo, Pearl, you gotta do it for the culture. Mm. Give it up, like the hustler, the big hustle. No, mm -hmm. I love MT, but Pearl, no, like, stop she's hating. an. I'm not, hating. Hating. I'm not even MT. I'm just saying, Pearl is an international movie star. Michael B. Jordan, please so, do us. MT said the hood would be proud. Do you he know? said the hood? Yes. Oh. He said if he hit that, the hood would be proud. No, but see, I also don't like the way he said that, like, if he hit that. He didn't say if wife that. So she must hit that for the culture. No. He shouldn't have said if I hit that, the hood would be. What? Don't, don't, don't downplay it by saying hit that. No, but MT. He should have said, he should have said if I wife that. Then I'd be like, okay, MC, ah, now let's see. You know, they can chase the Beyonce it out, you know, vibes. But he said if I hit that. No, no, you I don't think he cheap. meant it like that. It just came out like that. I know, because it's, it's hip hop. Just, yeah. But unfortunately, now it's just, it feels like you just want to hit. Like, it's, she's an international movie star. Now, me, I'm on MT side. Of course you are. You're a man. What does that have to do of with Of course you're going to be on the man side. No, I'm just, I, I love MT. I love MT too, and I love Pearl too, but I'm just going to hit that. I love Pearl, you know I love you. Ah, uh, you see, you had to mention that later. No, Pearl knows I love I've heard on this podcast. Pearl Doesn't knows I love her. Doesn't matter. We're talking about hit that for the hood. Pearl, I want my hoodie back, by the way. Anyway, let's move on. Um, <laughs> hit well, that for the hood. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, MT, uh, uh. <laughs> I love you, I'm joking. Yeah, but I understand what I'm he kidding. means. I mean, if MT stepped in the hood after hitting Pearl, we'd be like getting dead. No, but or, now it's like yeah. you hit that. Now you're telling the whole hood that you hit that. Right. Okay. But if you wife that, then I'd be like, okay, now the whole hood is proud. You wiped Pearl Tusi. Like, you wiped her. Don't talk about hitting Pearl Tusi. Okay. No. Uh, I think he's just wetted it a little bit. He's a trapper. He's just like came I across. get it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I think Unfortunately, he... I'm a woman. All right. Let's Michael get off B. MT. Jordan base. Michael B. Jordan and out. <laughs> Michael B. Big Jordan. hustle. <laughs> the big hustle. The biggest hustle. Nadia, um, thank you so much for coming to join us. Um, you told me you're not doing no interviews. Um, I, if it wasn't you, I wasn't going to do... I'm, I'm not doing interviews after this. Mm -hmm. Talking about... It's easy to talk to you about Kim because you knew him. You knew him longer than me, actually. Mm -hmm. So I could only do this with you. So I appreciate that. Thank you. But no one else. And no one else is going to... It's all going to be in the music. Thank you so much for coming. And um, I need to give a big shout out to uh, Torbega. <laughs> she kicks, she kicks my ass. Torbega, Bex. Bex. No uh, more handy Andy. Shout out to Crip. This was so beautiful. Yeah, I'm so reckless, man. <laughs> Oh, this is so nice. <laughs>